Alice in the Wonderland, Chapter 4, The Rabbit Sands in a Little Bill. It was a white rabbit, trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously about as it went, as if it had lost something, and she heard it muttering to itself, The Duchess, the Duchess, all my dear paws, all my fur, all my whisker, she'll get me excuses, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? Alice guessed in a moment that it was looking for the fan and the pair of white gloves. And she very good naturally, she began hunting about for them. But they were no nowhere to be seen. Everything seems to have changed since her swim in the pool and the great hall which the glass table and the little door had van vanished completely. Very soon the rabbit noticed Alice as she went hunting about and called out to her in an angry tone. Why Marianne, what are you doing out here? Run home this moment and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now. And Alice was so much frightened that she ran off at once in the direction it pointed to without trying to explain the mistake it had made. He took me for his maid, she said to herself. As she ran, how surprised he'd be when he finds out who I am. But I'd rather be, a, I'd better take him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find them. As she said this, she came up and underneath a little house. On the door, of which was a bright brass plate with the name W. Rabbit. Engraved upon it, she went in without knocking and hurried upstairs, in great fear lest she should meet the real Marianne and be turned out of the house before she had found the fan and the gloves. How queer it seems, Alice said to herself, to be going messages for a rabbit? I suppose Dana will send me on messages next. And she began fancying the sort of thing that would happen. Miss Alice, come here directly. And get ready for your book. Coming in, in a minute, nurse. But I've got to watch this mouse hole till Dana comes back and see that the mouse doesn't get out. Only, I don't think, Alice went on that they'd, they'd let Dinah stop in the house if it began ordering people about like that. But this time she had found her way into the tidy little room with a table in the window and on it, as she had hoped, a fan and a two or a three pairs of a tiny white kid gloves. She took up the fan and a pair of gloves and was just going to leave the room when her eye fell upon a little bottle that stood near the looking glass. There was no label this time. With the word drink me, but nevertheless, she uncorked it and put it to her lips. I know something interesting is sure to happen, she said to herself. Whenever I eat or drink anything, so I'll just see what this bottle does. I'd hope it will make me grow large again, for really I'm quite tired of being such a tiny little thing. It did so indeed and much sooner than she had expected before she had drunk half the bottle she found her head pressing against the ceiling and had stoop and had to stoop to save her neck from being broken. She hastily put down the bottle, saying to herself, That's quite enough. I hope I shan't grow any more as it as it is. I can't get out of the door. I do wish I had drunk quite so much. Alice, it was too late to wish that. 
She went on growing and growing and very soon had to kneel down on the floor. In another minute, there was not even a room for this. And she tried the effect of lying down with one elbow against the door and the other arm curled around her head. Still, she went on growing and as last source, she put one arm out of the window and one foot up the chimney and said to herself, now I can do no more. Whatever happened will become of me. What will become of me? Luckily for Alice, the little magic bottle had n now had its full effect. And she grew no longer. Still, it was very uncomfortable. And as there seemed to be no sort of chance of her ever getting out of the room again, no wonder she felt unhappy. It was much pleasanter at home, thought poor Alice, when, when one wasn't always growing larger and smaller and being ordered about by, by mice and rabbit. I almost wish I hadn't gone down that rabbit hole. And yet, and yet, it's rather curious, you know, the sort of life I do with, I wonder what can have happened to me when I used to read fairy tales. I fancied that kind of things never happened. And now, here I am in the middle of one. There ought to be a book written about me. That there ought. And when I grow up, I'll write one. But I'm growing up now she added in a sorrowful tone. At least there is no room to grow up any more here. But then, thought Alice, shall I never get any older then? I am now that I'll be com comfort one way, never to be an old woman, but then always to have lessons to learn. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, you foolish Alice, she answered herself. How can you learn lessons in here? Why there is hardly room for you and no room at all for any lessons books. And so she went on, taking first one side and then the other and making quite conversation of it altogether. But after a few minutes, she heard the voice outside and stopped to listen. Marianne, Marianne, said the voice, fetch me my gloves this moment. Then come a little, then come a little patting of feet on the stairs. Alice knew it was the rabbit coming to look for her. And she trembled till she shook the house. Quite frightened that she was now about thousand times as large as the rabbit and had no reason to be afraid of it. Recently, the rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it, but as the door opened inwards and Alice's elbow was pressed hard against it, that attempt proved a failure. Alice heard it, as, heard it say to itself, then I will go around and get in, in the window, at the window. That you won't, thought Alice, and after waiting till she fancied, fancied she heard the rabbit just in the window, under the window, she suddenly spread out her hand. She suddenly spread out her hand and made a snap in the air. She did not get hold of anything. But she heard a little shriek and a fall and a crash of a broken glass from which she included that it was just possible it had fallen into cucumber frame or something of the sort. Next, so next came an angry voice. The rabbit's pat, pat 
Where are you? And then a voice she had never heard before. Sure. Then I'm here digging for apples, Your Honor. Digging for apples? Indeed, she said, rab said the rabbit angrily. Here come and help me out of this. Sounds of more broken glass. Now tell me, Pat, what's that in the window? Sure, it's an arm, Yana, he pronounced it, arm. An arm, you goose. Whoever saw one that size, what it fills the whole window? Sure, it does, Your Honor, but isn't our for all that? Well, it's got no business there at any rate. Go and take it away. There was a long silence after this, and Alice could only hear whispers. Now and then, such as, sure, I don't like it, Your Honor. At all, at all, do as I tell you, you coward. And at last, she, she spread out her, band, her hand, her hand again, and made another snatch in the air. This time, there were two little shrieks and more sounds of broken glass. What a number of cucumber frames there must be, thought Alice. I wonder what they will do next, as for pulling me out of the window? I only wish they could. I'm sure I don't want to stay in here any longer. She waited for some time without hearing anything more. At least, at last, came a rumbling of a little car wheels and the sound of a good many voices all talking together she made out the words where's the other ladder why i hadn't i hadn't to bring but one bill's got the other bill fetch it here <coughs> lad he put em at this corner. No, tie them together first. They don't reach half high enough yet. Oh, they'll do well enough. Don't be particular. Here, Bill, catch hold of this rope. Will the roof bear it? Mind that loose slate. Oh, it's coming down heads below. Now, who did that? It was Bill, I fancy, who's to go down the chimney. Nay, I shan't. You do it. That, <clears throat> I won't then. Bill's to go down. Here, Bill. The master says you are to go down the chimney. Oh, so Bill's got to come down. The chimney, has he? said Alice to herself. Why they seem to put everything up on Bill. I won't be in Bill's place for a good deal. This fireplace is narrow, to be sure, but I think I can't kick a little. She drew her feet as far far down the chimney as she could and waited till she heard a little animal she couldn't guess of 